Outliers are unusual data points which are very different from the rest of your observation. For example, you are analyzing a data set which has people's age in it. Now you might see up to 90 or 100 years of age, but if you see a data point that has 1000 years, then that's an outlier that clearly indicates uh, an error in data collection. Sometimes outliers can happen uh, just because uh, there is a nature of variation in your data set. For example, you see a data point with 120 years age, uh, that couldn't be an error. May maybe it's a legitimate valid data point, but since it is very different from rest of the data points, uh, it can skew the statistical power of the data analysis process. Uh, for that reason, often, if not all the time, it makes sense that you detect outliers and remove that. Now, there are many different ways of detecting and removing outliers. There are statistical techniques such as percentile, z-score, standard deviation. You can also use visualization using box plot or scatter plot to detect the outliers. In this particular tutorial, we are going to look at percentile way of detecting and removing the outliers. We'll write simple Python code on a simple data set initially. Then we'll uh, look into some complex data set and we'll remove outliers from that using percentile. And in the end, we'll have an interesting exercise for you to work on. Uh, this tutorial series is going to be awesome because I will be producing different videos for each of the outlier uh, detection techniques. Uh, let's get started. Let's first understand what exactly is percentile. If you know percentile, then you can skip this section. I have the timeline of this video in the video description you so you can easily skip to the next section but you might have noticed that in some of the test score techniques they use relative scores here in this excel file i have the test score of different people out of 100 now if you use your usual percentage score then this will be your percentage score because these are the numbers for out of 100 so the percentage is same as that but sometimes people use a relative scoring technique where 69 is the highest score. Hence, they will say, okay, this person achieved 100%, okay? And 27 is the lowest score. Hence, we'll say this person achieved zero. So basically, he's at the bottom and this guy is at the top. Now, the definition of percentile is, this is a percentile rank, by the way. So here it, 50, it is 50%, which means that 50% of the samples are below value 56. So let's count it. So there are four samples, one, two, three, and four. So four are four out of eight, okay? So if you don't count this data sample, then there are total eight without after excluding 56 eight samples out of eight four are below 56 which means this is 50 percent percentile this is 100 percent percentile because all the data points are below 69 okay so that's some basics on percentile rank now in this tutorial we are going to examine a person's height data set so just assume that uh, there is an apparel or clothing company who wants to perform data analysis on people's height so that they can design the clothes of uh, relevant land accordingly. Uh, again, there are some dummy people's name and then there, and I have listed all the heights here. The data set is very simple. So by visual examination also, you can spot outlier easily. But the idea is uh, in real life, your data set will be much more bigger and you need to use statistical techniques, okay? So I'm gonna load this data in my Jupyter Notebook. So I have loaded it here in my Pandas data frame. And then I will use a percentile uh, feature of Pandas data frame. So you all know that if you want to access the height column, then you can access the height column uh, by doing this. And that will return you the NumPy array on that you can call quantile so quantile will give you the percentile value and if you want uh, the data samples which are above 95 percent quantile then 
you will get this value. Now, what this means is 9.68 is 95% quantile. Anything above this is something we can consider as an outlier. Okay, now, what do you want to set your threshold to? It really depends on situation. So it, there is no like fixed guideline, but here I'm just using 95%. So let me store this in a variable called maximum threshold. And the maximum threshold value is this. Now in your data frame, so this is how you identify the outliers. So see here the person's height is 14 feet. That cannot be true. You know, like it's hard to find a person who, whose height is 14 feet. So we just detected uh, an outlier. We can also detect the outlier on the minimum end uh, by doing this. So we can say my minimum threshold is quantile uh, 0 0.05 so in give me uh, anything which is less than 5% so then I get this value and when you uh, do less than that minimum threshold it will also show you some outliers see here Joseph's height is 1.2 uh, assume that this is the data set for adults uh, 1.2 feet height seems to be really uh, less and it's most likely a data error an outlier which we can remove easily now if you have a domain knowledge or uh, you can actually use your domain knowledge for example for people's height we know that the max height could be around 7 feet or maybe 7.5 feet so even if I don't want to do quantile I can directly say, okay, if the height is greater than 7.5, then that's an outlier. Uh, but unfortunately, when we deal with data sets in real life, we don't have that much domain knowledge and features are very, very complex. So it becomes very hard to come up with a fixed threshold. And at that time, using quantile can be very useful because what you're doing is you are removing the uh, the samples on the far ends uh, on the left far as well as the right far uh, so for that reason uh, quantile is uh, one of the techniques that you can use now here in our example if you want to remove these outliers what you can do is this in your data frame you can say if the height is less than max threshold and if the height is greater than min threshold, then only keep this example. So you will get all these examples and you see that there is no Yosef with 1.2 height here. And uh, also we removed uh, this particular sample, which had 14.5 feet height. Now let's look at little complex data set. I have a data set of Bangalore property prices, which I got from Kaggle. I have pre-processed it a little bit and I'm going to load this CSV file into my data frame. Now you can see that this has around 13,000 rows. Okay. And here, these are the, some of the very basic features for property prices. I have loaded them in my notebook here and this is how it is looking so now let's start analyzing this data so first thing i will do is i will just confirm how many rows and columns so 13200 rows seven columns you can also use a describe function just to get a quick feeling on your data set so here uh, this 25 percent 50 percent values that you are seeing are percentile what this means is quickly is for example, for total square feet column, 75% of samples have total square feet less than this value. This is the mean value. This is the max value. Okay. Similarly, price per square foot. Let's look at that. Here, 75% of your data sample have value less than 7,317 rupees per square feet. Now, if you're living in a Bangalore, you will get, get a feel that, okay, this is probably about right. But then look at the maximum value. The maximum value is 1.2. I 
and e raised to 7. So this value is a really high. Now this could be either a data error or it could be a legitimate property, but uh, these type of outliers will really uh, hurt the performance of our model. So we need to tackle them, okay? So let's first find out the min and max threshold by using the quantile. So here uh, you can also supply an array in your quantile function and it will return you min and max threshold, okay? And this I'm doing on price per square feet. I want to basically remove outliers based on price per square feet feature that I have in my data set. My minimum threshold is 13,600 rupees per square foot. Maximum is 50,959 rupees per square foot. Now, if you're living again in Bangalore, you would know that if you're getting a home which has a value, price per square foot value of less than 1366 is most likely not, not true. You know, it cannot be true. Bangalore is pretty expensive. So let's see what data points have a very less value. So you can do something like this, where in your data frame, you can say my price per square foot is less than minimal threshold and give me all those data points. So I got all these data points. Here the price per square foot is ridiculously low. In Bangalore, I mean, come on, you can't get uh, a home for 371 rupees per square foot. So these are most likely errors in our data set. Uh, look at this guy here. Nine bedroom hall, kitchen apartment, 42,000 square feet area, and you are getting, this is in lakh, you are getting in one crore 75 lakhs. This cannot be true, okay? So these are clearly uh, outliers. Now, I used 1% and 99.9%. You can use different ones, okay? So based on the situation, uh, based on your intuition, you can use different thresholds. Also, if you have a data, uh, domain knowledge, let's say you are working for makan.com or some property or real estate website, and if you have a talented business manager who comes to you and directly says, you know what, I know based on my knowledge of real estate in this city that the price per square foot uh, should be restricted in this two range, okay? Then it's fine, then you don't need to use quantile. But as I mentioned before, many times you don't have that domain knowledge, many times features are complex, that's when uh, quantile can be really useful. Okay, now let's look at our data points, which has, okay, price per square foot, price per square foot is greater than max threshold. Okay, now we are looking at the data sample on the higher end. Here, check this property. The price per square foot is ridiculously high. All these are like very, very high prices. Now, I'm not saying these are data errors. Maybe some of them are valid, uh, but if you keep these in your model, while you're building model, if you keep these data points, they are really going to hurt the performance. So uh, to remove uh, these outliers, what you can do is you can create a new data frame all right, how do you create a new data frame like this? So here what I did is remove anything whose price per square foot is less than max threshold. Um, yeah, so basically keep anything that is this, that whose price is less than max threshold and uh, greater than min threshold. So this will automatically remove your outliers. And now my new data frame, which is DF2, has 13,000 172 rows. Initially, it was 13,200. So we removed few uh, outliers here. And if you do df2 dot sample, by the way, you can use sample just to randomly sample some uh, rows from your uh, data frame. And if you print uh, 10 random rows, 
uh, they show these values and you, you see that these values look uh, pretty decent. That's all I had for this tutorial. Now the most interesting part of this tutorial is an exercise. You have to use Airbnb New York dataset from Kaggle. So if you right click on this link, you will find this data set here on Kaggle and you can click on this button to download the data set. Uh, if you don't want to do that, then you can actually go to my GitHub and on my GitHub uh, under this outlier, there is an exercise folder. In that exercise folder, you'll find this CSV file. Now this uh, Python, uh, IPython notebook is actually a, a solution or for the problem. So don't look at the solution until you have tried it out yourself. So what you have to do is you have to analyze this data set and remove the outliers uh, based on the price per night. Uh, the Airbnb data set shows various properties and hotels and there is a price uh, per night per apartment or whatever and you have to use your intuition to determine your percentile range and then remove it. Then you can verify your solution with my solution. Now I used different type of percentile range so your solution doesn't need to exactly match with mine. Uh, but this is a very simple exercise by the way. You'll be doing pretty much the same thing as what I did in this tutorial. So uh, go try it out. Uh, once you try it out, uh, you will your understanding from whatever you have learned in this tutorial will become more solid. I'm going to provide a link of uh, this this notebook in the video description. So go check it out. And towards the end of the notebook, there is an exercise description. Now many times people ask me how can we download the CSV file, etc. So what you can do is you can go to the root directory, which is pi, and you can click on clone or download button. And then you can go to ML directory under ML. I have different ML tutorials and here is a location where I'm going to host all my feature engineering code. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.